Hi folks, this is Jamie from Randomized User, and here's some advice on how to get started in Astroneer automation with the Auto Extractor, Auto Arm, and Medium and Large Resource Canisters. These four new items are added in the June 2020 update, and we'll see how to get them working and give you a few ideas of what you can do. There are four other items added as well, three sensors and a control signal splitter, which I hope to look at in a different video. Now firstly, here's the price of everything in the first automation update. You'll need nearly 20,000 bytes to unlock everything, although bear in mind most of that goes on the auto extractor and large resource canister. You'll also need the following to make one of everything. Nanocarbon alloy, notoriously the hardest substance to craft in the game and requiring many types of gas. A tungsten carbide, two steel, a plastic and a rubber, all made at the chemistry lab. Plus some basic materials, four zinc, two graphite, two glass, one titanium, one quartz, one copper and one aluminium. That sounds fairly late game, but you can dive in and play with some of it from quite early on. It helps, of course, if you already have a well-stocked base. So let's look at our four components, which are spread across the three sizes of printer. The auto extractor is the biggest boy, requiring 7,500 bytes and needing tungsten carbide, rubber and two steel. You'll need to craft this at the large printer. It's basically a powered auto miner. You place it on a node of resources, such as this resin, and it'll slowly mine it out without digging out the terrain. Place it somewhere where the green bar fills up the most. This indicates how much there is to mine below. Connect up some power. It doesn't need much, you can maybe use two small generators, a medium solar, or a medium generator. Now it's receiving power, you can turn it on, and it begins mining. It takes several thumps to extract one resource, which it will then place on top of the machine. There's two small slots up there, but you can expand that with some extra storage. Apparently, this will extract 15 times more resources than by digging alone. Although obviously it's a lot slower, and you do, of course, need a constant flow of power. But this is an automation machine, so let's introduce the Auto Arm. The Auto Arm is 1500 bytes to unlock, and is built with aluminium and graphite at the small printer. Its job is to move small items from the green circle on the left to the blue circle on the right. It needs to be on a platform receiving one unit of power, such as a small generator. Making sure you switch it on, um, you can see how the auto arm takes everything from the source side, um, such as this resin from the top of the auto extractor, and puts it in any free slot in the target side, in this case the medium storage. You can also decide which resource it takes, so you could force it to only process resin by putting one resin in the auto arm's filter slot. Then, once you've had your fill of resin, you can take it back to your base on your handy tractor. I assume you've got one. The auto arm works with all your machines to let you set up automation chains, or you can just stick to loading and unloading. Here I have it set up so two filtered auto arms unload my bounty, and places it in the correct area of storage. Note how it ignores the incorrect resources. Here's the medium and large resource canisters, each costing a few thousand bytes to unlock. The medium needs plastic and glass, while the large requires nanocarbon alloy, titanium and glass. Ouch. They act as a space efficient reservoir for your chosen type of resource. In the default mode, you place a resource in the top and it fills up the canister. The medium one has space for 32 of the same resource, the larger one 400. You can also toggle it to output mode, so you can get out each piece one at a time. Obviously, this is the perfect thing to automate, so here I'm setting it up with an auto arm powered as usual with a small generator for this demo. It pulls the compound from the storage and slowly fills up the reservoir. The bar on the side indicates how full it is, which in this case will take it up to 8 out of 32 storage. Let's now reverse the process so it's now extracting rather than filling. Obviously, in the real world, you'll be wanting to set up more useful chains than this. So here's a more useful demo on a way you could automate making hydrazine using ammonium and hydrogen. I'm using a silo of ammonium, an auto arm to move the hydrogen to the chemistry lab, another auto arm to remove the hydrogen and place it into some more storage. Now this wouldn't have worked with a chemistry lab before because you had to press the go button each time, but in the automation update the go button acts as a kind of toggle so that once you've started making something it'll keep on making it until you stop it or it runs out of resources. Anyway, you can see how I can now make eight canisters of hydrogen without any further input, uh, which will keep me in jetpack fuel for quite a while. Again, in the real world, you'll want to prettify the setup a bit, but I hope you get the idea and some inspiration for your base. And that's it! Uh, remember I have loads of Astroneer videos in the playlist playing through the game and checking out the various updates. 
and I hope to make more in this update, so subscribe to Randomized User and click the bell to be notified when new videos go live. And if you do find this useful and want to say thanks, you can buy me a coffee using the link, which helps me make the channel better for us all. Thanks for watching.